What's up guys, Duke Sloth here and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to create a desktop like this. Um, this was uh, sim something similar, it was originally created by Chaos Dick, but as he is the new community manager now, I figured he might not have enough time to tell us exactly how he did it. So I went over to the Rainlander Reddit and thanks to some very helpful guys there, I figured out or I learned how to create this kind of desktop and uh, as I felt like this might be interesting for some of you, I um, created this tutorial. Hopefully all the parts work out now because I had to recreate some of them due to issues with the overlay. I'll just get started right away and hope you guys enjoyed this. Let's start with the programs you will need. First up, you need a rain meter to get everything else started. Just download the beta release, uh, install it and so on. There's no need to, uh, to explain you how to install a game, a uh, program. So just go ahead and do that and pause the video for as long as you're doing it. And once you're finished, come back to the video. After that, you want to download the MonsterCat visualizer for rain meter and Honeycomb. I'm going to provide both of the links uh, down in the description and the download is always at the very right side over here. I hope you can see that now. Hang on, I'm just going to check. Yes, you can. Uh, so if you got those, you want to switch back to your desktop and the moment you have installed Raymeter, something like this should, should show up. Some of these actually, not just this one but this one alongside others. And what you can do is right click that and it'll show you this um, section to arrange things and so on. And what you can do here is go to rain meter and go to skins. And here, as uh, soon as you've got all the other programs installed, you will find the other ones. So go ahead and install the programs. And when you've done that, uh, you might have to uh, restart uh, hun um, Rain Meter, I'm not quite sure, but go to Honeycomb and click any of these icons. Uh, let's say I'm gonna, I am gonna, want to have Dota 2 because Smite fans are obviously big fans of Dota 2 as well. <laughs> and um, you can drag that around, you can do everything you want with it. What we want to do is right click this and um, from here you can now just go on Honeycomb and select all the Honeycomb icons you want. This is probably the easiest part to set up. And um, well, somewhere down here is actually an icon for Smite as well, which you can use. I'm not going to deactivate that, but instead I'm going to go ahead and deactivate the one for Dota 2. And um, there's something else you need to do when you want to start those programs. I'm just going to uh, show how it works with Smite because I feel like some people here might be interested in doing that part. Um, so what you want to do first is go to your programs, uh, go to Smite in your start menu, right click that and open um, the properties. In the properties you'll find the a folder where the program is located. In uh, Smite's case, this is a little complicated because you got this 317 uh, behind everything else. So you want to go ahead and copy all that. Uh, click OK. And you've got your Smite icon. You're going to right click the Smite icon. Click on the first thing that shows up, Honeycomb backslash Smite. And this window will open. Uh, with the file smite.ini. Open this file and you'll see something similar to this with the difference that in here it just says smite.exe. This is because the developer has put in a ton of icons for different programs but he doesn't know what uh, where these files are located. So what you want to do is go ahead and paste the path that you just copied here um, so this is saved in here. Then go to save, close that, close this and refresh skin and when you've done that you can just click smite and it should launch and it does. Excellent, isn't that great? You've got your smite launcher already. 
Next up, uh, let's launch Monster Cat. If you start it up, it should probably already show up. Um, if it doesn't, it should also be under skins and then Monster Cat Visualizer and Spotify.ini. In my case, you can unfortunately not see it at the moment. Um, I'll just have to hang on. Um, go into manage and unload the cut. All right, that's not working as it should be. Maybe I unloaded the monster cat. Yeah, now I'm going to load the monster cat. And uh, I cannot play the song at the moment <laughs> due to copyright restrictions. <laughs> but um, as you can see, it's placed down here uh, below where the rest of the image goes. Um, what you want to do is right click it and go into open variables and just take the ones that I have if you want to use this skin the same way I use it. Um, so you go for bar width 14, bar gap 4 and bar count 40. Basically these numbers and then you obviously save it. These numbers just change uh, the width otherwise it's just going to be across your whole screen and that's not going to look cool in combination with this skin. And uh, now we go for the most important part of the skin which is the actual overlay. In order to create your overlay I'd recommend first up setting your wallpaper. So choose your image, it's this one in this case, um, and set it as wallpaper either with right click here, no it doesn't work, but you know how to set a wallpaper. Um, I'm not going to explain that here. Um, now that that's out of the way, you want to edit it. And uh, I used GIMP to do so, you can use every other uh, image manipulation program as well. Um, and the final result should look something like this. You want to have everything that's in the front layer uh, vis visible and everything else should just be transparency. For those of you who don't uh, like editing and stuff like that, I'm going to upload a version of this one, not every other one that I create, or maybe I will. We'll see about that. Um, but if you want this specific background, um, I've got you covered. And once you've done that, you want to save it as a, uh, you want to export it as a PNG file and you want to name that PNG file 1.png. This is very important. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it here. You obviously want to export it. Um, then, uh, assuming that is on your desktop, you just create a new folder called cut and in order to do that you actually need to do a little step in between you want to go into your systems folder then you want to go to appearance and personalization go to folder options and go to view and or whatever it's called and then this one should be unchecked it's something like um hide uh endings of known file types. You need these endings th in this case, so um, it's better not to hide them. Once that out, that's out of the way, you can create a new file, um, which you're gonna be calling, or you're gonna simply gonna create a text document, uh, which is usually starting, uh, ending with txt. You're gonna call it cut.ini. As I've already done that, I'm not gonna do that here. Um, in this cut file, you want to copy the following settings. I'll hopefully put these in the description as well. I'm not sure if it will work though, um, simply because this is a little uh, complex. Um, and I don't know how well YouTube does with coding. Otherwise, just um, zoom in, I guess. Once that is done, your file is set up. Move the uh, one PNG into this uh, folder as well. If you haven't done that yet, uh, there's no need to put the XCF in there. I just did that for convenience reason. And um, now click anywhere on Honeycomb or wherever uh, to open Rain Meter again. And what you want to do here is 
you shouldn't have this folder yet. So you want to open, say, um, MonsterCAD Visualizer, and like, right click it, open the folder, go back. You just want to find out where the skins are and move this in here. I'm not going to do that because I've already have this folder. So now you have the folder cut in here and in the folder cut is 1.png with a transparent background and cut.ini. And um, then you can close this again. You go to refresh all so it shows up in your folder section. And what you want to do now, oh, that's interesting. Oh, you can actually see that. <laughs> um, what you want to do now is first of all, load the monster cred visualizer if you haven't done it yet um, and put it in place so it's somewhere down here um, you can basically keep all these settings the same i'm sure and i'm just going to leave it like that and then open the cut file and load that in this case, it should not be clicked through because otherwise every, th every time you click on it, uh, the monster cat visualizer is just going to overlap again and go to the front. Um, I don't think you should keep it on screen. I'm not quite sure. Uh, you can make it draggable for as long as you uh, use it. I don't need that anymore. I'm just going to reload that again. Um, save the position, snap to edges, that's all fine. I don't even know what favorites is for. Um, so yeah, there you have it. If you followed all these settings, you can close the program and it should pretty much like look like this. You can move away that file to your second screen if you have one or just delete it. Uh, close the other file if you want to. And you should have your desktop set up. Uh, you could probably get rid of this by uh, simply um, s removing the, the very bottom in your I actual image or set and then setting the... Um, the alignment a little different but i'm not going to do that i actually like it like this because every time i click the bar shows up anyways um hope this was helpful i'm going to link all the necessary tools and stuff thank you guys for watching duke sloth out